Okay, in this short video, I want to show you how to install ArcGIS Server. This is at the 10.4 release, but it should be the same for future releases. So once you've downloaded the product from the Esri sites, uh, which gives you access to it only if you have privileges to do it, you can actually go through the install and extract it. Well, it's basically just like installing any desktop software where you just run a setup program. And then it goes through the next, next, next steps. So let me just walk through this quickly. We'll pause the video as it's actually doing the install and we'll come back for the actual post install process where the real details are. This is just a standard simple install onto an AWS instance. Okay, so first thing I've done is double clicked on the setup file on the local computer. It goes through and warns of uh, copyright which we are authorized to install this, no problem. You have to agree to the license agreement, um, which is an Esri standard item. Uh, we've already agreed to this template actually because we have a license. Um, next is not many options here, as you can see. There's the ArcGIS server and then a .NET extension support. And it will install into C program files ArcGIS server. Now this is a 64-bit program. That's why it's not going into program files um, x86. It's going into just straight program files. If you wanted to change this, you can, but I'm gonna be doing a default. It's actually not a very big program, as you can see. It's about uh, um, just under 2,500 megabytes, and there's only one sub-feature. It does include Python. Now, if you already have Python installed on your local computer, because it's using the 32-bit version with the ArcGIS desktop, this is a different version. This is the 64-bit version. So you would actually see the two in line with one another. So it's important to recognize this is a 64-bit version versus the 32-bit version, which is used with desktop. This is where things start to get uh, a little bit part of the post process. You have to set up an account that this computer will run to use this program. Because it's a server, ArcGIS server is always running. And even if someone is not logged in, it's available. It has to start under an account. So this is where you will supply that username and password for the account that will be running ArcGIS server. It's important to know this account's name because if it needs to access any files like database files, or shape files on the local hard drive, this account needs to have access to read those files. So I'm just gonna enter a password for this. Now it is a good idea to also save this configuration. You'll notice at the very end here, it's actually pointing at an individual uh, file. We'll do that later. So this goes through and actually creates the account. And now we can export this configuration and this will uh, store the password that I just used in that so that next time I want to run this, I can actually um, rerun it and use the same password again. So it's a good idea just to actually save this as an individual file and you can place it wherever you'd like. I usually place it into my own folders. And it's an XML configuration file. So this is the February 2017th ArcGIS install. So I know what it was. And that's just a good idea to keep a little bit of information. And from there, it goes through and actually starts the install. I'm going to pause this while it goes through this process now and come back to you once it's completed. The recording has now finished. And as you can see, it's uh, um, popped up with this message. If you click Finish, it now pops up with this message about authorization. Authorization requires you have an authorization license file provided from Esri, which I'm not going to detail on how to get, but it should be provided by whoever is the authorization manager or yourself if you are the person in charge of Esri at your organization. So the file itself I have on my desktop right here, and I just have to say that I've already received as authorization file and then browse to that location, which it's on my desktop. It then goes through and authorize it over the internet. For privacy reasons, we're going to pause the video now. Then it goes through and actually authorizes after you've gone through all the dialogues with the information. It then goes and actually gets the authorization information from Esri directly over the internet, receives the final authorization, and makes the file 
uh, authorized with the software and everything starts to work. There you go. Now I have a software package that has been authorized. Typically authorization files are only valid for one year or however long your license period is. With that being done, it then actually goes and tries to open up manager. You'll notice that I actually have a, your connection is private warning. That's simply because this is using a self-signed certificate. The self-signed certificate is available on the local computer only. And uh, I have to do a whole bunch of steps to make this work. Otherwise, I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to let this work on, on, on localhost. To get through this environment, you set this simply click through the advanced and then say proceed localhost is safe. It'll still show you that it's not secure, but that's okay. Now the actual end setup process here, the installation wizard is actually a website as you can see. And we're just creating an ArcGIS server site. We're not joining an existing site. So we're gonna create a new site. And now we need to provide and create a site admin account. The default username is site admin and then you supply whatever password you'd like. I'm gonna be supplying a password that I know and that could be provided to other people. And then it actually provides directories associated with this installation. That again, the defaults are fine. So the root server directory and the configuration storage areas, which are, you can see the descriptions here. It then it's gonna go and actually create those individual folders on the local computer's hard drive. Even though it's running as a website, it is actually doing this on the local computer. That's what localhost means. And you'll also notice that 6443 is the port being used, which is the secure port. Therefore, it has to be HTTPS. This is the first computer in the site. It is possible to actually create multiple servers uh, running ArcGIS server as a team or as a server farm, and that would all be combined together as a single site. So when you add a service to one of the servers, it actually adds it to both servers automatically. That's a way to distribute your load so that you can have multiple people hit a single environment and make it so that the server won't get overwhelmed. There was some a little bit of documentation about that in the setup. Once it's completed, it returns to the ArcGIS server manager for you to log in using the account that you just created. So this account, the site admin account that I just created is the administrator for ArcGIS Server Manager. It is an account specifically to ArcGIS Server. It is not a Windows account, unlike the account that I created in the installation process before, which was just called ArcGIS. That is a Windows account that the service is actually running as. So once that service starts, that service is actually the manager here, which allows me to log in. So there's two accounts. One is a Windows account, and then this one is just an ArcGIS server account on the local machine only. So now I just provide the login, and now I'm back into ArcGIS server. You'll see that there's the sample world cities available, which is the default that's automatically created and available. And we can test to make sure the server is responding in every single way. In this case, it's the localhost 6443. We can actually go and visit localhost uh, colon 6080 ArcGIS REST services. We'll make sure this replies as well. There's the REST directory with the sample world cities available. And again, we can test that. And there we go. We are, our server is now running and available to be published. However, there's one more small item that is often forgotten. And that has to do with Windows security on the access of ports. So let me just close all this. If I tried to access this outside of this computer, it would not be available because port 6080 and 6443 are blocked by the Windows firewall. So you have to go and add an entry into this to be able to make it available. As you can see, the Windows firewall is on for three different areas. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. I'm just gonna go and actually add it. So we'll just go on an inbound rule. We're gonna create a new rule. It's for a specific port. TCP specific ports 
So 6080 and 6443 are both available. Allowing the connection on the domain, any private connections, and on public connections. So basically everywhere, this is now an open port. And I'll just call this one ArcGIS server. And there we go. Now we have an ArcGIS server port open to be able to access, access this from any computer in the world where it can see this server. So that's it for installing ArcGIS server, the base product. I have not installed the, um, the web adapter. So the only way to access this ArcGIS server is through port 6080 or 6443. You cannot pass through a web adapter, which is supplied in another video. Thank you.